You know what? All we missing now is the hot sauce and the mustard. Let's go get us some hot sauce. Hey guys, this is Carlinda with Carlinda Can Cook, and today I'm going to be coming to you with some catfish nuggets, y'all. Yes, catfish nuggets, and we are going to be having them with a side of baked beans, some hush puppies, and some coleslaw. So let's get ready, let's get set, let's get cooking. Alright y'all, so today we are going to be making uh, fried catfish with baked beans and some hush puppies. Now what I'm doing here is I'm actually searing some bacon in my pan and I'm also going to add an onion as well. Not a whole onion, maybe like a quarter of an onion uh, because this is going to be a small batch of baked beans and I'm going to uh, saute them down in this pan, okay? So I have this going and while we're doing this, we're also heating up our oil for our catfish and our hush puppies as well. Oh, and I'm also gonna make some french fries. So, stay tuned while we get all this together, and I'll be back. All right, y'all, so we have added our quarter onion to our pan with our bacon. And we're just gonna let this, uh, the onion saute down, and our egg bacon continue to brown. And while we do that, we're going to go ahead and season up our catfish. Because, honey, we are going to make us some good southern fried catfish. All right, y'all. So we're going to go ahead and season up our catfish real good. Now, I've already taken this catfish and I cleaned it really good in some um, water and vinegar and salt. So what we're going to do is season it. And to season it, we are going to add some mustard. Now, this right here, we are adding to taste, okay? So, I'm going to just add some mustard. I'm going to sprinkle some salt over my fish. Some onion powder. Some um, parsley. I'm also going to add some garlic salt. This also has little parsley flakes in it, but they're so finely chopped up that I want to be able to see my parsley. So I'm adding some garlic salt, some lemon pepper, and I'm not going to add regular pepper because I'm adding the lemon pepper. I'm going to add some Old Bay seasoning. This is new, so it's going to take a minute. Alright, so we got some Old Bay in there. And I'm going to take all of this and mix it up. And I'm going to season this in Zatarain's fish fry mix. So all I'm going to do is take some of this, the um, seafood breading, and put this in a bowl to uh, bread my catfish when I'm ready to fry it. So all we're going to do is just take this and mix this up really good like so. And we're going to let this sit here, and we're going to be ready to cook. We're almost done with our onions and bacon, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing with that as well. So with our catfish, we have it mixed up in this bowl really, really good. And we're going to let this sit here. I'm going to go ahead and put my um, seafood breading in a bowl so that we can start frying our catfish. So our bacon and onions are all done. Our bacon has browned up really well. Our onions have cooked pretty good and this is what we have. Now we have a little bit of oil that came off our bacon and I'm actually going to use that. In this pot right here, I have my baked beans. I'm just going to take these bacon and onions and put them right over in the baked beans. If you want, you can also add you a little bit of green bell pepper to this. Um, I'm not adding it today, but you can. 
Now to taste, what I'm going to do is just pour in a little uh, granulated white sugar. I'm also going to uh, put some cinnamon in here, some brown sugar, some vanilla, and then I'm going to add a little barbecue sauce to it. Like so. And finally, I'm going to add mustard. Now I'm going to give this a good stir. And again, I added these seasonings to taste. So whatever your taste buds tell you, that's what you want to do. Now this might seem weird, but I am going to add just a pinch of salt. Like so. Because the salt enhances the flavor of the um, sugar and all of the other flavors that you have mixed up in here. You don't want to add salt for it to be salty. You just want to add enough salt for you to know you put some in there, okay? Because you, I like sweet baked beans. Not overbearingly sweet, but I like sweet baked beans. So this is what we have going on in our pot right now. As you can see, you can see your bacon, you can see your onions. Yeah, everything else we put in there is all mixed up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and taste this. To make sure that the taste is where I wanted it. Alright, so I have my spoon to get this a taste. And that's perfect. So what I'm going to do is just give these one little stir. And I'm going to put the lid on this and let this cook slow because I don't want it to burn. Basically, I'm going to bring it up to a boil. And then I'm going to turn it down and allow it to simmer while I cook all of my other food. What you can do is you can also bake these in the oven if you want. I'm just cooking this on top of the stove because it's just for dinner, you know, and we're on a weeknight. So. But if I'm doing this for like an event or a large party or something like that, I will bake them in the oven, or especially if we're barbecuing, I'll bake them in the oven. But for right now, we're just going to put a lid on it and call it a wrap and season our, our bread, our fish, so that we can get our fish to fry. Okay, so what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've dropped a batch of our french fries. We're going to go ahead and drop this batch of fish. We have our baked beans simmering over there. So, they are doing their thing while we get everything else ready. And we have our fries and fish going at the same time. So, everything can be pretty hot when we're done. And we can get it all pretty much off the fire and served up at the same time. Like I told you before, all I did was I put the Zatarin's uh, fish breading in a bowl, and that's what I'm that's what I'm breading and seasoning my fish with. I didn't add any additional seasonings to it. All the seasonings I put were on the fish. Now, when you put your fish in the pan. You don't want to overload your pan because you want to be able to flip it. As well as when you add your fish to your pan, it reduces the temperature of your oil. So you don't want to overload it for that reason either. That you bring your oil temperature down too low and then your fish start absorbing the grease. So what we're going to do y'all is we're just going to let this uh, fry up. We're going to keep a watch on our fries. We actually make the steak fries over here. And once all of our fries are done, we'll be able to throw in our hush puppies. So I will be back when it's time to flip the fish.
Our fish has been cooking on this side for three minutes. We're gonna go ahead and just take it and flip it over now. Our fries are ready to come out, so we are going to take them out and put them um, inside of our strainer right there that we have lined with our paper towels so that it can drain off any excess grease. These fries are nice and crispy. So we're just going to let these sit in there. That way any extra oil that's on them, it can come right off. When you fry your french fries, you want to let your french fries cook for at least four and a half to three minutes. When your french fries get done, you'll know it because they'll actually float to the top of your oil. So for all the new cooks out there who may say, well, how will I know if my french fries are done? That's how you'll know. As long as you don't overload your pot, your french fries will float to the top. All right, so we're gonna allow our second batch of French fries to start cooking. Awesome. Guess I didn't put that in the cabinet. So while our second batch of French fries starts cooking, we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle our first batch with a little bit of salt. And we are going to take our fish out of the pan. Let's go ahead and take our fish. We're going to put it on this plate that we've lined also with the napkin. That way, any excess oil can get drained on that napkin. And I'm going to take my fish and I'm going to set my fish on top of those french fries. That way it can stay warm over here on the stove. And now I'm just going to go ahead and bread my next catfish. I'm going to drop that catfish right on in the oil. Because these are not really thick cuts of meat, you can let these cook for like three to four minutes on each side. And they'll be done. You can also put these in a deep fryer and deep fry your fish as well. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something that I do, and this is totally optional. This right here is freshly squeezed lemon juice. When your fish come out of the grease, you can take it and sprinkle it with some lemon juice. Again, this is totally optional. This is just what I do. Because um, I like that little tartness on my fish. So I, while it's still hot, I uh, sprinkle it with a little lemon juice or uh, white vinegar. It just adds an extra little oomph to your fish. And that's something that, you know, we've done in our family. My mama did it. My grandma did it. Now I do it. 
All right, so we're gonna let these french fries cook for another minute or two. And then it'll be time for us to flip our fish and we can get plated up so we can eat up. All right, y'all, so everything is done. It is time to get this plate right so we can eat. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to plate up so we can eat up. Look at them baked beans, honey. Yes, yes, yes. Goodness, okay. Put that little bacon on the top right there. Honey, we got this catfish on this plate. Gonna add us a few french fries over here. Yes, they are hot. And to that, we're going to add us a few hush puppies. All right. I'm going to wipe my hand off a little bit here. There y'all go. Dinner is served. Southern fried catfish with baked beans. We have some hush puppies, and some golden crispy steak fries. There y'all go. Guys, as always, if you have not already done so, please make sure that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified of all the delicious dishes that we make over here on our channel. If you decide to make one of our dishes, please go ahead and um, send us a picture or post your picture on your Instagram or your Facebook page and tag us at Kerlinda Can Cook so that we can make sure that we give you a shout out and show you some love back. As always, thank you so much for watching. Share this video with a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, anybody, everybody. You know what? All we missing now is the hot sauce and the mustard. Let's go get us some hot sauce. Remember, stay blessed and don't forget to always be a blessing. See you in the next video.